All right. Good morning, boys and girls. So today there's just a couple things that I wanted to mention about um, the pending doom, which I believe is coming tomorrow, right? For chapters seven, a little bit of three, 11 and 12. But before I do that, um, most of you probably have already seen the announcement that I'll be posting and or if you're watching this Zoom video, you'll notice that I'm going to highlight the most important part for lab report number one was to, in all bold here, see, and the total magnification for each drawing slash digital photograph. So some of you gave me beautiful drawings and you didn't put the correct magnification. So remember, it's the total magnification that needs to be reported and that total magnification is going to be, I'm trying to make myself big here. The total magnification is going to be uh, the magnification of the objective lens that you're using multiplied by the ocular lens that's in this container here, up here at the eyepiece. And many of you skipped multiplying it by the ocular. You need to do that. And you'll notice that in the comments on the lab report grade, it'll say total magnification incorrect, please correct and resubmit. So this assignment has uh, multiple submissions. Uh, multiple attempts and it is still open. So you can certainly fix that and then resubmit. And I will go back in and um, regrade them and add those points. I'm going to, you'll notice the assignment is available until the 21st. After the 21st, I will not add those points. So you basically have a week to get that done. Please get it done ASAP. The sooner you get it finished, the sooner I will grade it and um, fix the grade. So that's about the lab report, I wanted to mention that. And then I did want to talk a little bit about the pending exam for the chapters that are coming. So I want a new share here. I think I'll just do a whiteboard. So for this quiz, this lecture quiz, Right, we have um, chapter seven, which is all of chapter seven, uh, a bit of three. That's the part that we skipped earlier, particularly focusing on the different types of media and the different applications of media, of when you would use a particular media, why um, a selective media is important. And then chapter 11, which is physical and chemical means to kill microorganisms. And then chapter 12, which is very different. Chapter 12 is chemotherapy, right? So that's using particularly either antibiotics or synthetic drugs to kill bacteria, fungus, or inhibit viruses inside the body. Right, so that's a little bit different twist. It's 11 and 12 are very different chapters. Chapter seven, you'll notice, is a lot about, again, still more review from bio one and some of your other classes. All of the uh, essential nutrients are listed. And if you watch the video, you'll see that we go through them. And that's also on the lecture handout for chapter seven. Why do the organisms need this nutrient? What do they use it for? And where? what is the source of it in the environment, right? Then it switches over to how these nutrients are transported in the cell, which again is a bio one review of passive and active transport, moving molecules across the membrane. And there's a nice summary table 7.4 of that for you. And then, the chapter moves into talking about environmental factors that can influence growth, right? So these are what we would think of literally environmental factors. What's the temperature? How much water is there? Um, is the oxygen available? What's the osmotic pressure? What's the pH, right? Um, and then it goes through all of that. It talks a little bit about biofilms, a little bit about organisms that live together. And then the last bit of the chapter is how we count bacterial growth, like what the bacterial growth curve looks like, 
how fast bacteria grow, and how we manage to count them. And as I was just mentioning before I hit the record button, these things from chapter seven are going to be useful for you because they're going to help you understand the labs that you're going to be doing by when you're growing your bacteria. So most of you, all of you, I should say, have completed lab exercise one and you're getting ready to move on to lab exercise two. And I think you'll find that after you take this quiz tomorrow, you'll feel a little bit more prepared to actually grow the bacteria because all of the items how fast they grow, as well as the nutrition that they need. If you think back to what's in chapter three there, um, you'll be putting bacteria in liquid media, on slants, on agar plates, into media that is complex, into media that is synthetic. And so it'll give you um, a good idea of how that kind of all works to grow bacteria and help us identify them very quickly. And then again, chapters 11 and 12, 11 is a lot of memorizing. Focus on what the particular method is, what's practical, what's a practical application of that method, right? So like, yes, certainly we would all wish that our silverware was sterilized that we used in restaurants, but it's not, right? It's sanitized, it's practical, it's what can happen quickly and it's enough. Right. So focus on the methods, not so much how they kill the organisms, but what the practical applications of them are, both um, sort of in your everyday life as well as in a clinical setting. And I think I've tried to point out, especially in that lecture video, you know, levels of sterilization or levels of disinfection do are different depending on what the healthcare setting is, right? And depending on what, uh, unfortunately, I know some of you might not like to hear this, but for example, the levels of the standards of sterilization and disinfection are a little bit lower in animal practice, like in veterinary practice than they are in human practice, right? So um, just kind of be aware of those differences. Um, and then for chapter 13, oh, sorry, chapter 12, getting ahead of myself. Again, I would focus also on how this, the mode of action. So again, I'm not, I am not going to be asking you names of particular drugs. That's not the point of this. The point is to have you figure out if I have a medication and it impedes or breaks down peptidoglycan, what types of organisms is that going to kill and what types of organisms are going to kill fastest, right? So focus on the mechanisms. There's a nice picture on page 319 for bacteria. There's also um, a nice table for um, how antivirals work, what they, what they work on. And there's also a nice table for the fungal infections. And all of those, I go through all of those in the lecture notes as well as talking about resistance and um, how to test for different antibiotics. I would point out to you because there are more than one short answer. There is more than one short answer about resistance. So I would be very careful Right. So there's two pieces to this, to the resistance, right? It's not the people that are becoming resistant to the drug. It's the bacteria or microbes that are inside of you that become resistant. And there's sort of like two, I don't know how to um, split this out for you, right? So the how the bacteria become resistant or the mechanism of uh, resistance. That's what's happening, um, let's say, molecular, molecular or cellularly. And there's a difference here, right? So the molecular portion of this, like 
how the actual organisms, oh, I didn't think it was gonna change at all, Red. Sorry. Only, there's only two ways that, or two pieces to how bacteria or any microbe develop resistance. It's either a spontaneous mutation. This is still red. Think back to chapter nine, right? Or gene acquisition. That's it. That's that's how the bacteria uh, develop resistance. The result in the cells, right? So the cellular um, mechanism, right? Of sort of why the drugs no are no longer effective. That's the list of five different things. One, two, three, four, five that are in figure uh, 12, 11. And it's literally called the mechanism of drug resistance, right? That's not the how, that's the what happens, right? The how the bacteria become resistant is this spontaneous mutation or gene acquisition. And again, this is all chapter nine. And I do expect you to be able to reincorporate those things from chapter nine conjugation, transduction, transformation, uh, transduction, both specialized and general transduction and transposons, that's, that's gene acquisition, right? That's all the stuff from chapter nine, that's the how. The why or the effect of that, the results of those two things, one of those two things, that's where that your book talks about how the drug gets pumped out or there's an enzyme that's formed, right? Those are the results inside the cells. And that's different for different bacteria and it's different for uh, different drugs, right? And then the third part of resistance is what I like to call the stupid human tricks, right? Right, the things that humans do that promote or let's say increase the chances of resistance. Right. And that list of course was also rather long, right? So that was, uh, putting drugs in animal feed, global transport, you know, we move around, we take, well, not this year, but normally we take our bacteria and their resistance with us wherever we go, um, picking up strains of resistant bacteria in a hospital, not completing your antibiotic uh, regime, getting an antibiotic when you don't actually need one, um, and then not completing your regime by, you know, short, shortening, you feel better, so you stop taking it, so those are like all the stupid human tricks, right? Or the human role in antibiotic resistance, as your book calls it, um, that increase the spread of the resistance among other people. And um, obviously in a hospital setting or a clinical setting that can be quite dangerous. So um, kind of sort that out in chapter 13 because students often get that confused how the how and the why like the how and the what here um and again i would encourage you to take a look at the critical thinking questions at the end of these chapters because those are the types of questions they're not going to be the exact questions but they're type of questions that i may ask you in the short answer portion so just remember this particular quiz has two components um, they'll be graded separately. It has the traditional, the regular objective portion. And then it also has a short answer section. And that short answer section, you'll be asked to answer three questions. Five will appear on your screen. Do not answer all five of them. I'm not going to grade all five of them. I'm not going to pick your best three. That's your job. 
Um, so answer three questions. And um, I believe the time limit is, let's see, I can probably take a peek on that. I think the time limit is 25, 30 minutes. So if you get yourself organized, you should be able to, let's just take a quick look at, um, oh, it's 40 minutes. So you have plenty of time to uh, answer the questions. I expect you to answer them in your words and I expect you to define the words that you use so that, <coughs> excuse me. I expect you to define the words that you use so that I understand that you understand what you're talking about, right? Students often just start spewing out, you know, oh, that's a mesophile, thermophile, psychrophile. I'm like, okay, no, that doesn't work. If you don't define those words, I have no idea that you actually know what they mean, right? So I am expecting your words. I'm um, not expecting things, I'm not expecting you to copy and paste things off the internet or out of your textbook. Those will get you zero points. Um, I think I have you, you need to check on there and it finds things like if you, you know, cut, cut and paste things out of your book, for example, it just says, you know, 90% uh, similar to this source and then you won't get any points. So. There's plenty of time for you to think about what you want to say, organize your thoughts, and then um, write them down in a cohesive manner. We talked about this, I believe, on the recording a little bit the last time. Um, we want to, if it says compare and contrast, right, we want to say some, something that's similar as well as things that are different about the two things. If it says discuss, it says define, right, read the question carefully. All right, so that's all I have. Do you guys have any specific questions? About the material, about any of this stuff. It doesn't seem to be particularly complex to me. It seems pretty straightforward, but. Um, I think I'm just nervous about um, doing well on this test that's also. Um, I think the material seems pretty straightforward. I started growing my bacteria. Um, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, so I'm looking forward to kind of getting this test under my belt to feel a little more confident as I go into um, the rest of the lab activities. Um, is there any information on the exam concerning our lab activities? Um, not, not specifically. I mean, obviously indirectly there's questions about growing bacteria and the bacterial growth curve and like how you count bacteria, right? And different ways to count bacteria, but no, there isn't anything specific to like that you would have had to already complete the labs and know the answers to those, uh, lab questions before the, um, before the lecture quiz. No. Okay. Um, and it's, I think it's like 42 questions. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I don't remember. Let's see. No worries. Um, Probably. That sounds about right because it sounds like, um, it feels like uh, it's lecture quiz three, right? So. Yeah. yeah I think it's like words like 80. Yeah. It's probably 41 questions if there's 82 points. Yeah, so it's probably 40, 41 questions, two points each. That's my guess. Are, are there any picture questions? I know this sounds silly. I just like to try and. Um, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. No, I don't think there's any drawings on there. Um, that's really hard to do because it doesn't load for everyone the same. And. Um, okay. So that's usually not um, in my- I always have form. trouble seeing them. So I'm not really, I get a little bit nervous with that. Um, otherwise, I think, thank you for preparing us as much as you did. And I look forward to finishing my last two study days <laughs> and then taking my exam. So um, this, I said this before you, before you join, but it's going to be on the recording, I'm pretty sure. And I'm going to be posting an announcement. Many people did not get the magnification correct on their lab exercise one. So if that's you, um, you'll need to correct those and resubmit. 
Um, it's the assignment is available until the 21st, which is next Monday, and it allows multiple submissions. So you can take down or change what you have up there and then click resubmit. And I will, if that's the case for you as an individual, um, I took off a lot of points on that. I took off like three points because that's a really important thing, the total magnification. Yeah. Um, so fix it and resubmit. And I put it in each person's comment section. So if, it, if it's you, and I'll put it in an announcement as well. So if it's you, just get it done and resubmit. I'll take care of it today. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Because you won't have, and I just want to say this so that it's on the, the video portion, you won't have an opportunity to do that for lab report two. And I will be harsh on taking points off on lab report two, sort of if you didn't learn your lesson on lab report one. So um, it's really an important thing to pay attention to. So I'm just putting that out there. Many people do it incorrectly the first time in person as well. And I take points off the first time. And if you have to turn in multiple labs, I only take points off the first lab. Uh, but then <laughs> after that, the grace period's kind of over. So it's the same. So um, I'll be asking people to fix that and resubmit. Okay. Thank you so much for letting us know. Yeah. And that's all I know, unless you have specific questions. I don't think so. Um, and you have, this is your only lab, or this is your only meeting session before tomorrow's exam. Is that correct? Well, um, tomorrow at 11 and tomorrow night, if I remember. Um, and, I, and if I don't get my tooth pulled today, um, I'm going to try to have my tooth pulled on Wednesday so that okay. I won't have to talk again until Monday. Um, yeah. But if I have to have it done today or tomorrow, <laughs> then, um, you know, it may just be me typing. Um, I totally understand. I just had one done. I had like, a, I, had a, I had to put a tea bag in my mouth because I was bleeding so much to like help stop the bleeding and like help with the clotting. So good luck with all of that. It's oh, rough. thanks, thanks. <laughs> Um, but, uh, okay. I'll try. I'm off this morning. I had a late start getting my son to school, but tomorrow I'm off today. I'm studying and finishing up my stuff. Um, so I'll probably pop in tomorrow just to okay. clarify any, any clarifications okay. that I have. That's fine. All yeah. right. All right. Thank you so much. Great. Bye. See you tomorrow. Probably have a good one. Thanks. You too. Let's